What's going on YouTube? It's Pelfrey. We're going to do an update on the Red Sea Reefer 250. Um, this is going to be pretty much a raw type of update. Um, some things going on with it that uh, everything's going good so far. Uh, I did get the algae turf scrubber running last weekend, so it's been running for a week. Um, I'm documenting that process completely. There's been no growth yet, it's only been a week, so I didn't expect anything after a week. I did test the phosphates last week with the HANA phosphorus checker. I can't remember, I think it came back 17. Tested it today, it was 12. And then I tested the alkalinity with the HANA checker, DKH checker, and it was 7.1. Um, the HANA alkalinity checker was very, very easy to use. I'm, I'm very glad that I got it. So I'm just hoping that those readings are indeed correct. Um, as far as the tank is concerned, everything's going good. I got the pumps off right now. Uh, I'll show you guys in a minute. One of my Kessel arms has started to change color in the water. So I opened up a ticket with Kessel on it and they said that it's fine. It's not gonna leach anything into the water column. So thumbs up there, it's nothing to worry about. Uh, the corals uh, that I have on this side of the tank are mainly the torches and hammers, the what you would call euphilia garden, I guess you would say. I have a acan colony and a, a scully that I've moved over on this side. And on this side, the rose bubble tip anemone is still doing all right. And a couple SPS frags and I got a bird's nest right here. So it's interesting. Um, I've not run a refugium inside of this tank at all, ever. and. I brought over some pond matrix from my previous tanks and then one piece of live rock from one of my previous tanks. But yesterday, uh, Saturday the uh, 6th, I believe it was, I noticed a bunch of specks on the inside of the glass of the tank. So I took the algae scrub, or excuse me, the glass cleaner and started to clean the glass. And as I was doing that, I noticed that they were moving. So I cleaned the glass really well and today there's not as many of them, but they're there again. And I have no idea what they are and I have no idea where they come from. So I've reached out to a few people that uh, are YouTubers and sent them a video of what's on the glass. And it's really, really hard to see because they're so tiny. And at first I thought that this was uh, red bugs. Um, I know that um, from my research that they come, can hitchhike on uh, acros. <clears throat> I don't have any acros in this tank. Um, mind you, I did um, a couple months ago. So that's a very uh, likely possibility, I guess we would say. Um, but I don't really think that it's red bugs because after looking into it, red bugs are actually yellow. Um, so it's we've come to the conclusion that it's either pods or flatworms. Uh, and apparently uh, wrasses will take care of uh, flatworms, I'm not really sure. And if it is indeed pods, I have no idea where they came from. I've not seeded this tank with any pods, I've not done anything to it, except for add some coral to this tank and a couple fish here and there, and uh, um, cleaner shrimp, and that's it. I've not done anything else to this tank. I've not introduced any rock from anywhere else, I've not done any of the such. So it's very strange, they're on the glass right now, like I said, they're really, really small. And whenever you look at them, it does look like they have a tail on them. So it's very interesting. Um, and I really don't know what I'm gonna do to combat this. I guess I'm gonna wait until they get a little bit bigger so I could properly ID them uh, before I start going off onto the deep end and you know dosing this tank or doing something else that uh, could ultimately uh, wreak havoc when this could be literally a explosion of a pod population that was attached to the pod matrix or that one piece of live rock in here. I have really no idea where it come from. So aside from that, everything's working pretty good. Uh, it is worth mentioning that I did open a ticket. The max spec gyre that's on this side of the tank is the original 230 that I put in the tank and it's kind of separated uh, on the end. It's not really that big of a deal. It still functions. The, the, the noise has quietened down. Um, and, and now that I'm speaking of the noise, this is a new uh, 230. It's been in the tank for probably a month now. Whenever I put it in the tank, it was pretty noisy. I have them running anti-sync right now at 40%. They're off for the sake of the video. Um, but anyway, I opened up a ticket for this one uh, on the, the right-hand side of the tank, and Coral View came back telling me 
Once again, this is the second time that they've told me this, that I needed to take the pump apart and put it back together. Um, I, don't, I, I don't really know how I feel about that. It seems like the, the, every time I'm going to open up a ticket, their solution, excuse me, their solution is going to be take the pump apart, put it back together, and see what happens. And I'm not reaching out to them to, uh, and saying, hey, I need you to send me a pump. I'm just simply opening up a ticket. That way, if something does happen, there's a, a record of it. So I try to be proactive whenever it comes to that. I like to have tickets open. And that way, they can't come back and say, well, this is the first time that we've heard of this, uh, this happening with your pump. And, you know, I can go back and say, no, I've opened up tickets for particular issues that have happened. So it's running fine. I've not taken it apart yet. Uh, like I said, I re really don't know how I feel about their response telling me to, to take it apart. So, you know, if they're watching this video, then so be it. But I'm going to let that pump run until something happens, you know, or I need to take it apart for cleaning, which it's been on my tank for a couple months now. And it probably needs to come out to be cleaned. There is um, an explosion of coralline algae, and it is on the pump. Apparently, it likes to attach itself to plastic before it attaches to anything else. So I scraped it off the overflow a couple times. I have a plastic frag rack in the back. It's got coralline algae on it. And uh, like I said, the gyre's got coralline algae on it. So I guess that's good. Um, I guess that's uh, a proof of a semi-healthy tank. I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong. But aside from that, I did have a piece of live rock on this side of the tank that had some Zoas on it. And I've just never really been a Zoa fan. And I guess it's because uh, of what I've read, you know, the, the toxins that these things can release. And with kids in the house, I really don't want to stick my hands in the tank and then have to worry about anything like that. So I took it to the local fish store. I trained it in. I got a cleaner shrimp. And I do have two frags uh, that have Zoas on it that I kept. And I'm going to give to a local buddy of mine next time I see him. So I've pretty much rid myself of Zoas. Um, they're very colorful and they're, they're, they're nice corals to look at. I just don't really want any of this system. Right now, that may change sometime uh, later, but for right now, I'm good. But um, I got the torches and the hammers, like I said, on this side for the most part. And then I picked up uh, a couple frags from Tidal Gardens during their live sale that they had recently. And overall, I'm satisfied. So. Uh, hopefully I have better luck with SPS frags this time. I have them uh, pretty much in the middle of the tank, so up directly underneath the lights. And the lights go up, ramp up to about 60% intensity throughout the day. So it'll come on about 8, 8.30 in the morning, and they'll slowly ramp up, and then they'll go off. Uh, they'll start a slow ramp about 6.30 p.m., and then they'll go off completely at 8, 8 p.m. So I have them pr running on a pretty long schedule. Um, aside from that, everything's doing pretty good. The, the sand, there's been, uh, knock on wood, there's been uh, no issues at all with the sand. I've not had any uh, algae growing on the sand, no diatoms growing on the sand, absolutely nothing on the sand. And as you could probably see uh, in some of my previous videos, this rock up structure over here was almost completely covered in green hair algae. So basically I let it grow out, <coughs> excuse me, I let it grow out and then I just started plucking it off uh, as needed. And then I do have a yellow tang in here, and it's done a pretty tremendous job of taking care of the, the algae that's in the tank. And uh, I've not got rid of all of it completely, uh, kind of hoping that the algae turf scrubber will take over and um, do its job and compete for the nutrients. So I'll take the camera off of the uh, tripod. We'll take a closer look at the tank while the uh, gyres are off and uh, kind of show you what I have going on. So first, let's take a look at the uh, sump compartment. And I do have a uh, shout out to Aquamax. Um, I know I've been uh, prolonging this project for quite some time, but I have two of these extra small reactors and uh, I'm gonna for sure put one in the tank to run carbon. I was gonna put a second one in here to run GFO, but I don't really run a lot of GFO. So I'm gonna keep it on standby and if I need to run GFO, I can. Um, but you can see the Nile skimmer, uh, the 120 is, is still doing great. Um, I did move it over to fit the Rain 2. And the overall objective was to run the Rain 2 algae scrubber and the Aquamax reactor off of my return pump. But after watching a video from uh, Reef Dudes, he's got his uh, automatic feeder uh, feeding into his return chamber on his sump. 
and I'm going to follow that path. So basically, I'm going to attempt, I know it's really dark in here, I'm sorry, but I'm going to attempt to run the MJ1200 and, and have it run the uh, algae scrubber and the carbon reactor. And if that pump doesn't work, I'll probably spring for the uh, the CJ uh, 1.5. But I have a full video on the Rain 2 and how I have it set up. So uh, stay tuned for it. I'm not going to go through all that right now. Uh, in this back compartment, I have a piece of the Marine Pure Block and a bag of Pond Matrix. Then the filter socks and then another bag of Pond Matrix. Uh, you can see here there's the bulk reef supply reactor that is teed off of the return. And that is going to come out as soon as I get uh, all the fittings that I need to run the reactor, the Aquamax reactor and the scrubber off of the same pump. So aside from that, it's pretty messy down here. I've got a lot of uh, just a little odd and end stuff that I need to take care of. Oh, and it is worth mentioning that not long ago, a couple weekends ago, this return bar, or uh, excuse me, pipe, pipe up here that connects to the tank developed a leak. And I did pull it completely out of the overflow and reseed it. Uh, I did open up a ticket. Once again, I said I'm proactive. I opened up a ticket with Red Sea sent them some pictures of where the leak was. The leak has since stopped, but they did send me a new standpipe. So, you know, that's, that's good. <clears throat> so, as far as the tank is concerned, still running the two Kessel 160s and the uh, Neptune auto feeder. So I have the auto feeder set to cycle twice a day. And whenever it cycles, I have the gyre pumps to shut off that way. You know, I, I know that it is uh, dropping the food inside the feeding ring, but I went ahead and programmed it that way because at some point I'm going to move the, the auto feeder into my sump. That way the, the uh, gyre pumps are turned off and the food can come out of the, the uh, return section here. So I did buy a split return nozzle, uh, a 3D printed split return nozzle, and I got a full video coming out on it. Um, needless to say, I'm back to the lock line and I just shortened it a little bit with I had a couple extra pieces on there and it ended up blocking the light so I moved it out of the way. You can see, maybe, you can see the frag rack there, it's got some Coraline algae on it. And then you can see the Kessel mount at the bottom of the water line there has started to discolor. And it almost looks like rust, but uh, once again Kessel said that there, uh, there's no issues there. You can see the Coraline algae that is grown on the max spec gyre pump here and that is the original one that I added to the tank and I don't know if I can get a shot of so the end cap there it's very hard to see but the end cap there had come kind of separated from the body and I did push it back in to kind of reseed it and that seems to be seems to be all right so as far as uh, far as corals are concerned I got the bubble tip and it has not moved, it has stayed there since I put it in there. And uh, pretty happy with it. It's done pretty good, it looks all right. And I got these two pieces just down here in the sand bed. So these are the frags that I got from uh, uh, Tidal Gardens. I got these three and that bird's nest there. And you'll have to um, excuse me because I don't really remember the names, but I, I think that they're all Stylo for Stylos, maybe I'm, I'm not even gonna attempt to butcher that name But they look like they're doing all right. This one right here looks like it might be getting beat up by the light a little bit It's been in the tank for about two weeks now, so it may need to move. I'm gonna leave it alone And then as far as the hammers, sorry folks, I ran out of space on my other phone So I'm gonna pick up on this phone. So as far as the hammers and the torches are concerned, they're all looking great And I really wish that I could show you these tiny creatures on the glass, but I'm pretty sure I'm not going to be able to, no matter what I do to attempt to get them to show up on the camera. There's a tiny speck there right in the middle of the camera, but it's, it's not going to focus. So, but everything's doing good. Um, I got a couple things that I'm going to work on, like I said, and uh, that's kind of just that. It's a full tank update just kind of everywhere. So there's the Scully that I moved over here. There's a Recordia and there's some Acans. They're all doing all right. And up on this frag rack, a couple of torches there and a hammer and some Zoas that, uh, like I said, I'm gonna get rid of at some point. But uh, 
I'm satisfied. I'm happy with every, how everything's going, minus these creatures that have just appeared in my tank from, from somewhere. I'm not really sure where, but I'll address that. Um, a little cleaner shrimp. It's been a while since I've had one of these, so he's always fun to watch. But for some reason, the fish always get really, really shy whenever I come up to the tank or anybody comes up to the tank. But uh, that's a pretty nice view without the uh, gyres running. Like I said, I have them running anti-sync mode, ramping up to 40% for six seconds, and then they just switch back and forth to create some flow in the tank. So that's about it. Uh, it's probably been about 20 minutes now. I'm gonna try to to get some other stuff done. It's Sunday afternoon, so hopefully I'll have this uploaded Monday or Tuesday. But that's pretty much a full update, folks. I huh? appreciate you watching. Um, like, comment, subscribe. If you uh, have any suggestions on anything, you know, this is, this is the hardest part for me is the coral and the fish, then please leave them in the comment section below. Once again, I appreciate you watching, and we'll see you on the next one.